Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we got a lot of information, so let's break right in. So first up, a suit alleges that BitMEX chiefs looted more than 440 million from exchange after finding out about probes. And this is looking pretty bad for Isaac Hayes and the rest of the crew. But remember, this is allegedly, and everybody is innocent until proven guilty. However, this doesn't look good. Also, Bitcoin just had its second highest ever monthly close. So what does this mean? It means that potentially we're looking for a massive bull run coming up. Warren Buffett praises stocks dollar cost averaging, but does it work for Bitcoin? And if you've been on the channel any length of time, you know that dollar cost averaging is what I preach about a lot. But does it really work for Bitcoin? We're going to take a look at that and some other pieces of data like the Bitcoin dollar cost average website. And next to last, looks like Facebook is up to its old tricks by censoring Bitcoin, but yet leaving the hashtag Libra totally intact. Finally, we're going to take a look at a pretty sad case of scams. A British grandma loses 65,000 to crypto scammers. And this is something that we need to take a look out for, especially with the potential bull run coming up. We must protect those people coming into our space, especially the ones most vulnerable, senior citizens. So we'll go over all that. First, take a look at the market. So today is November 1st. Congratulations, we made it. And uh, Bitcoin has yet again closed above 10,000 like we uh, assumed it would. And we are looking at some uh, pretty great prices. Now, it's only up 0.1%, but what is important is that it has maintained above 13,000 and has almost hit 14,000. Now, it actually did hit 14 and went above it for a small brief amount of time but then it was pushed back down. Now, from everything I've read, it looks like as soon as we can get clear past this 14,000, there is no resistance uh, in the uh, TA land universe. I don't know if we can just go 14,000, 20,000 immediately. I don't think that's how it's going to work. However, it is very positive to see it right around this range, 13.7, 13.8. And we don't see like this parabolic, you know, just, just rocket ship all the way up. We're taking little steps, little steps here, little, you know, one step down, two steps forward, one step down. So I like these types of things. I think this is healthy for the market. And I think we are uh, potentially going to go much higher. Ethereum is almost four, at 400. I'm pretty happy about that. It's up 0.8, but down 6% for the week, but that's okay. I think we're going to see bigger and better things coming up. Tether's still around 16.6 billion market cap. Uh, XRP, hey, still uh, holding steady, although it is down 6% for the week. And usually it's around a quarter, and now we're looking at 23, 24 cents. So, eh. Bitcoin Cash 2.1 up, uh, down around 268. So I like that. Chainlink is still holding strong at that number six spot. So pretty happy about that. 11.21. We were above $12, but uh, hey, what can you do? Now let's see what else we got. Cardano is up four and a half percent after that impressive run with their ERC20 wrapper, or excuse me, exchanger, which we talked about yesterday, where you're taking the ERC20 tokens and directly exchanging it right onto the Cardano network. And that, to me, is a game changer. Now, uh, Gogan, the Gogan roadmap was just put out, which is going to uh, transform Cardano into a smart contracts platform. And that's only in four months. I know some people are bummed out about it, but honestly, I think that's amazing that they're making that much progress that fast. So tip of the hat to the IOHK team and Cardano and especially Charles Hoskinson uh, he's taking a lot of hits from a lot of different people and it looks like uh, he's uh, leaving all those people in the dust but again we will see USD coin uh, yeah still around a dollar what else we got anything fantastic 2.4 down for Tezos that's eh, a bummer 2.8 for Cosmos up congratulations to uh, Cosmos holder I'm not one of those people B chain up uh, 4% still around 10 cents nothing big and omg network at five way so nothing really too fantastic let's see celsius network geez a dollar 39 it was just at a dollar 30. what the heck happened so uh still keeps continuing to make uh, impressive gains but uh, i will keep buying that every 48 hours i'm now buying uh, celsius and theta is uh now on my radar and i'm buying that every 24 hours just dollar cost averaging so we'll see how it all works out anyhow that's what's going on the market let's jump into today's top stories so this one Kind of a bummer, but uh, not surprising. So there's a uh, lawsuit uh, being put out against BitMEX, especially with what is going on. If, you, if you're not fully aware, we had covered this exactly a month ago. Uh, the CFTC charges uh, BitMEX with illegally operating derivatives exchange. They're not so 
upset that uh, this is going on globally. What they're upset is that they are not taking the provisions to actually allow uh, American citizens to not invest in this uh, platform, especially with the leverage trading. So there's that. Then there are the, uh, the AML and KYC or anti-money laundering and know your customer. Uh, it was not as, uh, I guess, in stone or as effective as they'd like to see it. So they charge them against it. And this has been going on for a month now. And then on top of that, uh, there is a loss suit. This is a, a suit following on behalf of plaintiffs BMA LLC, which is Yaroslav Kolchin and Vitaly Dubinin. They seek an order of attachment against HDR Assets. You know HDR Assets is one of the companies, or the company, uh, behind BitMEX. And they are claiming that these guys are wiping out their accounts uh, so when there are judgments against them, potentially, uh, that people can't claim too much because it is all going into wherever it's going. So let me back up. So it states here, the top officers of HDR, like we just talked about, the parent company of crypto trading platform BitMEX has been charged with facilitating unregistered trading and other violations, systemically looted 440 million from HDR accounts, a civil lawsuit claims. A spokesman for HDR called the claims spurious or fake or just ridiculous. Of course, that's exactly their job. They have to say that. Now, again, I will just preface it with this. This is all allegedly. You are innocent until proven guilty for most countries. So we'll see how this all plays out. But again, not looking too hot. So here's the allegations. Uh, while being keenly aware of the commodity features or CFTC and Department of Justice investigations, defendants Hayes, Dello, and Reed looted about, about half a billion dollars of proceeds of various nefarious activities that took place on the BitMEX platforms from defendant HDR accounts, the suit alleges. The suit claims the alleged looting occurred to reduce the amount of assets that could be seized. Well, of course, if you can in some way, shape, or form go, hey, we got no money, uh, then uh, good luck suing us. Uh, that's usually a pretty good plan, uh, especially if you know a lot of people are lined up to sue the living pants off you and get as much money as you possibly can. Now, that is just how corporations and shell companies usually do things. Actually, I can't even say that. I'll be honest with you. A lot of companies will do that. They will start to move things around and they will say, no, sorry, we don't have any money. And then, you know, that's how it usually works. Uh, LLC, C Corp, S Corps. So a spokesman for HDR Global uh, Limited denied the claim saying, Pavel Pogodin of Consensus Law has filed a series of increasingly spurious claims against us and others in the crypto sector. We will deal with this through the normal litigation process and remain entirely confident the courts will see his claims for what they are. How many times have you seen uh, the lawyer from the other side go, you know what, we're not too uh, not too confident in this, and we might lose. <laughs> it never happens. Even if you know you're going to lose, you got to say, we're confident. So uh, we'll see how it all plays out. But um, again, there's some shady things. I never really liked BitMEX. I never really liked the leverage trading platform. I just didn't. I know some, some of you guys uh, really like to trade, and that's fine. I have nothing against trading. Nothing. But uh, I do have a problem with uh, when people just lose their mind and they sink every single thing they have into it. And uh, I always think that's a bad idea. Still do. But I mean, even on the opposite side, even if you're a dollar cost averager and you're like, you know what? I'm not a dollar cost average. I'm going to sell my house in dollar cost average. That's probably not a good idea either. So there's always extremes. Uh, there's always these things that need to be corrected. So we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, man, I think uh, a lot of people are going to get burned here. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, and this is really positive news, Bitcoin just had its second highest ever monthly close. So what's going on? Well, pretty simply, according to Crypto Compare, the day after the 12th anniversary of its white paper, which was yesterday, Bitcoin managed to close the month of October at 13.8, which was its second highest monthly in history. Let me say that again. As of October, the end of October, it closed out at 13,801, which was its second highest month in history. So where do you think this is going? I mean, we have seen nothing but positive news about institutions getting in, about Paul Tudor Jones, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity Digital Assets, people just coming out of the Warwick, MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor, Square, Grayscale, and they're all just buying it up in the background. And I mean, not just from me, Guy from Coin Bureau did a great video about talking about all these different uh, institutions really buying up. Also, Satoshi Stacker did the same thing. But, you know, they have their own little ways. But I thought it was great how it's all kind of coming together. In 2017, it was just vapor. It was nothing. It was white papers and hopes and dreams. But here we are, and we can really point to something and go, well, these guys believe it is a store of value. They're buying it for his clients. They're gobbling things up. There has to be a reason. 
And here we are. So second highest monthly close in history. And here's the crazy thing. It wasn't off by much because Bitcoin recorded its highest ever monthly close of 13850 on 31 December 2017, the same month uh, that it went to almost 20 grand. So 13850 to 13801. Let me do some quick math here. Uh, yeah. 49 bucks. 49 bucks. Not too bad for what's about to happen. So let me know what you think in the comment section. I personally believe 2021 is our year. Everything is going in the right direction. Um, I hate to say this, but really COVID-19 was the catalyst for Bitcoin, for adoption, for store of value, for people to kind of get into it, especially institutions. And look, with all the volatility that's about to come up with this presidential election, and I, this is how I see it, I see a dogfight and insecurity about what is about to happen. There's going to be a lot of talk about fraud. There's going to be a lot of talk about we can't call this presidential election on the night, maybe not even 24 hours, maybe not even a month afterwards. You, you never know. But at least a couple of days afterwards, we're not going to have a, a clear winner. And you know who likes volatility? Traders. But you know who also is a big proponent of, of uncertainty? It's just investors. They need something that they can put their money into that is going to be positive. And if you take a look around, it's not stocks, it's not bonds, cash is on fire. I mean, you could still do it in a cash. I mean, even a couple of economists have said get into cash. A lot of people are going, you know what I think? I'm going to take a look at what MicroStrategy did because they just made about 100 million over a couple months just by putting in a Bitcoin. I think that's where we're going. Anyhow, I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, I'm a big fan of dollar cost averaging. So when I saw this, I'm like, well, maybe I'm wrong. So Warren Buffett praises stocks, dollar cost averaging, but does it work for Bitcoin? Great question, right? So let's see what we got. So Warren Buffett, if you don't know, probably one of the uh, most prolific investors of all time, amassed a uh, fortune of a small country right, as far as what his uh, value is worth. But Warren Buffett has a message to young investors dollar cost average into major stock market indices. So he's just talking about stock. He's not talking about Bitcoin, just saying, hey, if you want to get in a stock market, um, don't dump all your money all at once. Don't do trading. Just be an investor. Dollar cost average every week or every month or whatever it is that you want. Every day, doesn't matter. And just take it slow. And over time, compounding interest, you're going to be probably way ahead. However, data shows that the same strategy has worked quite well for Bitcoin over the past decade. The question I had was, well, how well has it done? That's the big thing. So cost dollar averaging into Bitcoin works, history shows. As an example, if an investor cost averaged $100 into Bitcoin since January 2014 and spent 35 grand in total, it would have been a return of 1,648% or around 589,000. So you could have made half a million on 35,000. That's not too bad, I think. But here's the thing, that's January 2014. And then the question I have was, well, are they are you talking about every day, every week, every 10 days, every month? I mean, what are you talking about? Cuz it doesn't really say here per se. So I went to this website. It is called Bitcoin dollar cost average.com. Pretty simple. I'm going to link in the description and I put the uh, same numbers in 1 1 2014 and 100 bucks. And I did them all and it is weekly. So if you put 100 bucks in a week since 2014, uh, you'd have a pretty good amount of money. Spend around 35,000. You got around 45 Bitcoin. <laughs> not too shabby for 100 bucks. And that's, of course, not taking any profit when it went all the way up to 20,000. Just 100 bucks, 100 bucks, just brainless, just like whatever. But here's the question. Uh, what about after that big parabolic warrant? So on August 6th, the price of Bitcoin was at 11.7 on Binance. At the time, researchers at Coinmetric said that if an investor dollar cost average into Bitcoin since it's 20,000 high, it would have returned a 61% gain. They stated, despite Bitcoin still trading 30% below all-time highs, dollar cost averaging from the peak of its market, which is around 20 grand, would have still returned 61% or 20% annually. So probably better than the stock market because if you're looking at like 5 to 8%, that's a great year in the stock. I mean, that's like stupendous, especially for all these uh, fund managers who claim that they can do like just magic things. 8% uh, is like far and away pretty grand great. So I still think I'm like, ah, it's not really that not that fantastic really if you think about it 20% you're like Ugh. In, in crypto that's like not a big deal so here's the crux of it dollar cost averaging has worked for bitcoin because bitcoin can have extreme corrective phases but during bull runs when infrastructure and fundamentals significantly improve 
and an institutional craze occurs, its value can increase rapidly. Around March, the price of Bitcoin went to 3,600. Remember that? Fantastic day. If you picked it up, congratulations for you. But as of November 1st, Bitcoin's price is above 13.8, up more than threefold since. So there has to be a little bit more to just brainlessly dollar cost averaging 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks. And there was a little piece. I can't remember if it's from Paul Tudor Jones or somebody else, but they talked about dollar cost averaging and they would increase by 10%. Oh, I know who it was. It was Jim Cramer. And he talked about it when he was interviewed by Anthony Pompliano. He was talking about dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. And he said, once it dips, you know, by 10% or 5%, or actually just like 3%, I think it was, he said that he would increase uh, his dollar cost average price by another 10%. So as it goes down, he would actually increase the amount of money that he puts in. And then of course, when it goes up, he would start to just stop a little bit or uh, reduce the amount. And I thought it was pretty smart. That's actually what I've been trying to do. As things go down, I start to put a little bit more money into it, which is the exact opposite of what your brain tells you to do. Because, you know, we're like, hey, it's going up. Let's buy some more. But that's not how it works. You're supposed to invest as things start to take that little those little steps downward. So that would have been a perfect time when Bitcoin went down around uh, 3,600, below 4,000 in March. It's so actually just start to really, uh, you know, put a lot more money into it. But it's hard to do because it's like, you're like, oh, it's going down. So it's not really worth too much. But you have to go against that, that thinking and just try to take the emotion out of it and go, this is the plan. This is what I have. And you set an emotion and you just stick to it. And that's the big thing. Just sticking to the plan, whether that be dollar cost averaging down or doing your exit strategy. Uh, and for everybody who's new to the channel, I'll link my exit strategy at the very end where I talk about uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP, how I want to ask, exit for all three of those. And that's it. So let me know what you think in the comment section. But again, you can dollar cost average, you can trade, you can do whatever you want to do. I tend to like dollar cost averaging because it's kind of like set and forget it. When things are to go down a little bit, you put a little bit of money in. And when it goes up, you kind of like decrease a little bit. But that's what I see. All right, let's move on. Next one up, this is a quick one. Uh, Bitcoin censors on Facebook. I don't know exactly how much this is uh, is true because it says, this is nine hours ago from you today. And it just says that uh, if you use the hashtag Bitcoin, you're going to get something like this. And I believe this is in German. I don't speak uh, German, but uh, I think it is. Post mit dem hashtag Bitcoin word in here. And I'm not going to try to, to pronounce this, but I mean, from what I can tell, what I ran it through Google Translator, it's like, hey, you can't use uh, hashtag Bitcoin. It's against our guidelines. <laughs> That's really what it says. So, which is a real shame because you can use hashtag Libra all day long and they don't do anything. But again, keeping our community safe. That's how it is in Germany. I, mean, I did it on, on my website. It seems to go through. But uh, again, you know how it works. Uh, they have to crawl and there's all these bots. So maybe they'll take it down. If it does, I'll post it on uh, over on YouTube on the community tab. But uh, so far, so good. So again, who knows how accurate it is. It's just interesting to talk about, but uh, we'll see. And last up, this one sucks. Uh, British grandma loses 65,000. And it's not that she lost it initially, but it's what happened afterwards. This is a bummer. So again, when people talk about like, how can you lose money? You know, how can you fall for this? Well, it's not just you. I mean, me and you are probably pretty savvy. We're not going to fall into this nonsense, right? But you have to understand there's a lot of people who are coming in who have no idea what's going on. They know kind of what Bitcoin is and what it does. But you have to watch out for the most vulnerable, right? And those are senior citizens. And this is a perfect example. So this lady, I don't know her name, but she became uh, pretty interested in the idea after watching an episode of uh, BBC's Dragon's Den. I don't know what that is. Uh, if you're from uh, UK, let me know. The whole reason why she got into it is because she wanted to make a little money so she could send her grandkids to a private school. I mean, that's a sweet story, right? And what happens is she ended up putting 42,000 pounds into confirmed scam broker X tick, I don't know what that is, that got eventually shut down. So again, on a weekly basis, I get about 20 or 30 offers to do some kind of promotion or something, and they all suck. I, I just, maybe some of them are good and some are legit, but just to protect everybody on this channel, I do not talk about most anything. And there are things that I do talk about, like CryptoTrader.tax, iTrust Capital, Trade the Chain with Alex Mascioli. Those are the three, and that's pretty much it. That's all I really talk about. I mean, if I'm going to talk about anything, it's pretty well done. Oh, also, uh, um, Stonebook, the Shield Folio. I mean, that just makes sense, right? But I'm not going to sit here and talk about some crazy exchange or some crazy ICO or some crazy new coin or IEO. Whatever. I just, they just don't. And this is one of the reasons 
because of that. I'd rather pass on a good one than give anybody a bad one and then have them lose all their money like this poor lady. So, so that's bad enough that she lost that 42,000 pounds, but here's where it gets pretty awful. So a fraudster pretending to be an investigative officer from Financial Conduct Authority or FCA contact the woman a few months afterwards via email and swindle her into paying another 25,000 pounds on the premise of returning her initial loss. I mean, how dirty is that? Dirty, that's just awful. Such stories are not uncommon. Elderly people are the main target of crypto scammers who have permeated social media. Last year, a couple lost almost a million worth of pension funds after being swung by criminals. So imagine working your whole life, working your tail off, putting away, doing all the right things, all the cost averaging, whatever else it is, and, and you have a pension coming, and then somebody takes it away because you're like, oh, this looks like a pretty good opportunity, and I can help my grandkids out or something, whatever. It's just awful. It's just awful, and uh, hopefully, if you have any of your elderly parents or grandparents, you can inform them what's going on so they don't get caught up in this kind of nonsense. And look, uh, when I worked for home health, I saw this all the time, and that's why I, tr I really need to do more for that uh, scam of the day. But uh, hopefully articles like this, and then what we talked about yesterday with the uh, Ledger Nano, uh, if you get any kind of email or text message uh, asking for your personal information, of course, that's a scam. They don't do that. So as time goes on, we see more articles like this. I know people are like, why do you even talk about this? It's so dumb. It's because we need to have people like you teach other people so they don't get scammed and then people can come into this uh, space and not get ripped off and they can say, oh, I, I would like to invest into Bitcoin or whatever it is. So anyhow, that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me through the whole video. I really appreciate it. If you don't know, I got a second channel. It's called Digital Asset News Clips and I made it for two reasons. One, because sometimes I get a little loquacious, I talk a little bit too much and I want to break down all the clips. So you can go over there, sign up and uh, you'll get notified of just the clips of these types of videos or if things just get a little bit too busy just find the clip that you want and then just uh you know check that out the second reason is because if uh youtube says hey we don't like digital asset news and they you know they bust me down and they uh, take away my channel i have a backup so uh if you could just check that out every so often that'd be great and that's all i have for today so again thanks for sticking with me enjoy the rest of your sunday i'll see you on the next